welcome to Logan Sounds Off, where I talk about books, music, and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Logan Kelly. Hello and welcome to Logan Sounds Off. Today I'm doing an interview with the one and only Phelan Drew. Hello Phelan, how are you at the moment? Hi Logan, I'm very well thanks. Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. That's brilliant. So, for the first question I just wanted to ask you, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, well I'm from Greystones in County Wicklow and I am... I I grew up there and I um I suppose I went to school I went to secondary school in Greystones so I made plenty of friends there um I went to I, I started off going to school in Greystones I went to St Kevin's which is a Christian brother school and then um between the jigs and the reels I went to several different schools I went down to a boarding school in um in waterford ring college in in waterford as a boarder for two years uh i went to saint jared's in bray for i think it was fifth class fourth class fifth class and then i went back there first year uh, i didn't settle there um and i wanted to be uh, i wanted to go to school um uh, where in my hometown um and i knew a few people in greystones and they all went to saint david's so i ended up going there uh, for to, you know, my secondary schooling and I really enjoyed it there um, and then when I was about 16 I joined a local uh, sort of amateur you know drama group we um, we had a little profit share company which means that when we uh, did performances um, we used to we used to share the the, uh, the money that came in um, so I had a little bit of money from that uh, every week and I did a lot of work with them over a two-year period. So I had l- tons of experience with them, which was great. And then when I left school, I went to the Gaiety School of Acting, which was in its first year uh, as a full-time course. So uh, I did a year there. And then I started acting. Um, so I really feel like I started when I was 16, uh, because uh, whether you're being paid or not, uh, as long as you're enjoying it and you're getting plenty of experience, it's uh, it's all it's all work, uh, but it doesn't feel like work when you're enjoying it. That's brilliant. Thank you, Phelan. And you're totally right. Um, we actually talked in school about if you're going to work, make sure that you're happy doing it, not for the money. Um, mm-hmm. So my first question is, a lot of people would think growing up that you would listen to a lot of trad music. Now, I read that your dad actually had a very eclectic um, record collection, which is very interesting with loads of different artists, including, yes, some trad. You did listen to a good bit of trad growing up, but that wasn't the only thing. Could you expand on that a bit? Yes. Um, Well, he, um, I suppose when he went to Spain first was when he really started to kind of, uh, uh, started to play music. Um, so the, he learned uh, some uh, cla- uh, flamenco guitar, um, which is a kind of a Spanish folk, uh, their, their, their style of traditional music in Spain. And, um, you know, he developed a style of playing from, from learning to play flamenco guitar. Um, so he loved Spanish music. He loved, um, he had some friends who are from that world, people like Paco Pena, and um, he uh, and he loved, uh, I think his father, my grandfather, um, his name was Paddy, he was a carpenter, and uh, he used to sing some um, blues songs around the house, um, and I think that was the music that was popular when he was, uh, when he was growing up, and I think he passed on a love of that American uh, blues music onto uh, onto my father and his brothers. Um, my dad loved um, American blues. He loved bluegrass, which of course is so closely related to Irish uh, traditional music. Um, 
and uh, and Scottish traditional music, of course. Um, he loved uh, he loved all kinds of music. He was really uh, he, he loved musicians of of all kinds, whether it was classical musicians or jazz musicians or traditional musicians. Um, he was always uh, uh, very in awe of people who could uh, who could play an instrument, um, and regardless of 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 their background or 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 what kind of genre they played. That's amazing, and I can see then why your dad, Ronnie Drew, would be so successful in the Dubliners because he was so open to all different aspects of music. It makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, and now, when you were twelve, you started to get into a bit um of a rock and roll, some rock and roll music like Chuck Berry and Little Richard, which is very interesting. And I wanted to ask, where where did that come from? Was it from friends at school, or did your dad start to listen to a lot more rock? Gosh, I don't know really. Um, I, it's funny because I know that when other uh, kids were uh, were listening to what whatever was current, um. Uh, in the charts I, I just sort of uh, I, I went down a, a kind of a rabbit hole with uh, with American rock and roll and um, yeah um, when I was growing up um, you know we had Top of the Pops was was the highlight of most uh, kids week you know um, but uh, when my dad was home we weren't allowed to watch Top of the Pops because he didn't particularly like it and uh, he kind of had a, a bit of a, a monopoly on the TV um, we uh, of course we only had one TV uh, yeah, like most people um, uh, but um, when he was around we never really watched Top of the Pops but I just I don't know I just got into I loved um uh, I love the I love the I love the feel of of rock and roll. There's something very, um, you know, it, it, it's just it comes from a very uh, uh, a very raw place, and um, you know, as as we now know, an awful lot of the um, music that became popular in the uh, in the late fifties and the mid to late fifties and in the sixties, um, which influenced the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Uh, came from people like Chuck Berry and um, and and Little Richard and uh, and then before uh, them uh, people like Muddy Waters and Edda James and um, people like that. Uh, so and who were in turn influenced by T Bone Walker and um, um, who else? Uh, yeah, BB King would be. A, I'd be a big fan of of that kind of blues as well. You know um, that real sort of uh, Chicago blues and um, um, yeah, Detroit uh, kind of sound. Um, yeah, I love all that stuff. And you can, you know, go back as far as you want. And, you know, I'm always I'm always learning something new uh, in that in that in that area. That's really, really cool. And now moving on, um, you mentioned that you're an actor, which is very interesting, actually. But you were saying that you graduated from the Gaiety School of Acting um, in 1988, when it just first started happening, the start of it all. And you were all saying about your drama club. So I wanted to ask, what inspired you to go into that drama club and to become an actor? Um, I suppose I was lucky because um, as a child, my parents um, you know, brought us to see a lot of shows. We would have gone to see uh, Maureen Potter and the Gales of Laughter in the summer, and um, then we would have seen her, um, in, you know, in the winter time when we went to the pantomime and um, we saw Chris Curran and and Cecil Sheridan and um, all these wonderful people who uh, were friends of my father's, uh, who came from. Uh, a variety background, which was um, was really popular in um, uh, up until up until more recently, up until you know the seventies, I suppose the nineteen seventies, the nineteen eighties. Um, uh, years ago, uh, you know, there would have been quite a number of theatres in Dublin. There would have been, you know, the Olympia uh, would have been more of a a, a variety uh, theatre and uh, places like the Theatre Royal, which was. Uh, knocked down like uh, before I was born, I think even, but that was a, a two thousand seater um, 
theater and these places were full um uh, with uh, and and that's where people went for their entertainment um uh, to see uh, to see all these wonderful shows and people came from all over the world opera singers and uh, great musicians and and played in the theaters in dublin so there was a great uh, scene and i suppose there was a uh, a great um uh, kind of cross pollination of uh, of artists um, and my father would have, when he came back from Spain, he would um, sort of immersed himself in that world and got to know a lot of people. So I was very lucky that uh, not only did I get to go and see a lot of these shows, but I got to meet the people afterwards, which is kind of important because, um, you know, you, uh, you, you realize that these are, these are, are, are people with, you know, uh, with husbands, wives, with children at home who go to school and uh, and that it's a profession. Um, it's not some sort of uh, unattainable goal. Um, and, and I think it's difficult for uh, for some people who maybe don't have uh, parents who theatre or whose background is in um, the arts um, because uh, maybe they they feel that it's something that's um, they'll never get 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 involved in. Um, I, uh, I I remember going to see some theatre when I was around eleven or twelve, and um, and and thinking that it was something that I I, I would like to do that I, I felt that I could do, and so when I um, joined Gladys um, Gladys Sheen, the wonderful Gladys Sheen from Bray, mm -hmm. uh, she had a little theatre company in Greystones. Um, uh, for adults so when I joined that when I was 16 um, it was a great introduction and uh, and I, I kind of joined it to see to see if, if it was something that I would like to do and and I, and I just took to it like a duck to water I really loved it. That's brilliant and then you debuted on My Left Foot in 1989 and it was no nominated sorry nominated for five Oscars which is incredible yeah what was that like well it was very exciting i i um you know I, I was very lucky to uh um to be involved i i i'm kind of modest or I, I you know i'm i i I don't feel as if I had a huge contribution to make on that film. I was just, uh, I just had a little job on it. Um, for I was, on, I worked on it for for about six weeks, um, and uh, I was very, uh, very grateful to uh, Jim Sheridan and to Noel Pearson. Um, but I got to play one of, you know, one of uh, Christie's brothers, and um, and I was on the uh, the set a lot, so I got to see. Um, I got to see how a movie is made and that was great experience and to observe people like, you know, brilliant people like um, like Daniel Day-Lewis and Brenda Fricker and uh, Ray McAnally. And um, and then, of course, there was, um, you know, there was wonderful people in it like Mary Conney, who was a great friend of my father's. And um, uh, yeah, it was it was just it was a, it was a great starting point uh, to. Um, to, to kind of uh, in that world and uh, it was wonderful experience and then of course when uh, the film did so well it was uh, it was great to be a part of that and uh, and enjoy the celebrations that's amazing an amazing story actually um i quite like the way you were saying that you were able, even though you were on the cast for six weeks i'm um, sorry on the set you got to meet a lot of the cast and it must have been an amazing experience to see all these actors in their element and all the producers and everything at the time. Yeah, it was. And I think what I was uh, so taken with was um, that because it was set in um, in the nineteen, the late forties, the early fifties, um, it was just the sets were fantastic. And the costumes, I think Joan Bergen did the costumes. Um, well, I don't think, I know she did. And uh, she did an amazing job. And uh, I think um, Jim Sheridan at the time, he was, I think it was his first feature film. And he he very much gave uh, the responsibility to everybody involved in the movie to do their best work. And, and, um, and, and, and from the, the sound department to the 
the, the, the camera department to the the um the uh, the lighting and and uh, and and the set design uh, everybody just did uh, pull together and and did an amazing job so it was a real ensemble effort and uh, and it felt great to be a part of it that's really brilliant actually that you're able to describe that because it's it's very hard to think about a film set in your head because there's so many elements that people don't really know about in making films um but now rolling back to the music um when did you yourself start performing as a musician? I I um I suppose I started when I was about fourteen. Um, I I I started going to guitar lessons with a man called Pat Fagan in Bray. Um, Pat lives in Tala now, and um, I've met him since. He's uh, uh still teaching, and um, um, I suppose I I uh I I I started doing classical guitar lessons with Pat. I did that for uh, a couple of years and um and I always really enjoyed it but I never really had um I always think with um when it comes to um musicians uh, it comes from a need to play um it's a bit like as an actor you you kind of feel the need to to do it it's not something that you you kind of you wake up in the morning and sort of think, you know, oh, how will I motivate myself? You actually physically need to do it because it feeds you so much. It makes you feel so good. And um, and I think with musicians, it's the same. And so um, it's not something that I, I really pursued hugely. Uh, when I left, uh, around the time I was leaving school, um, uh, when I was 18 or so, um, my friend Joe Morrison, from Greystones and I uh, started playing together a little bit in his garage and um, Joe's a really talented musician um, and uh, and another friend of mine Paul Byrne we we kind of got together and we started playing together and we had a bit of a joke band we had a band called um, the Baskerville Sisters um, and we got the name from um, uh, there was uh, my father had a my mother had a, a piano stool which is in my house now. It's over by the piano there. And there was all this um, music in the piano stool. And there was sheet music for um, a song um, uh, by the Beverly Sisters. And um, and we were joking, kind of going, what 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 would what happened to the Beverly Sisters? You know, so we were thinking that maybe um, maybe they retired and their brothers took over um, the band. And uh, so, but we just changed the name to the Baskerville sisters. And um, because the, the sisters were better known, uh, the boys went out with the, with the band and, but still call themselves the Baskerville sisters. And um, so uh, we used to have, uh, we used to play all covers, rock and roll kind of covers, um, the Rolling Stones and, um, uh, the trogs and all these kinds of things, songs that were relatively easy to play. Um, <laughs> and um, and then we, you know, we would uh, we would always come on stage to, to some uh, television theme tune or other. Um, and uh, we always had great fun with it. And that was, uh, I think, part of its appeal for everybody locally, because uh, if they, you know, if we were enjoying it, they enjoyed it. So uh, and that was good fun to be a part of uh, on and off for a good few years but all during that period i was um i was working full time as an actor so i didn't have the time to really commit to it and um, but we sort of did it as a sort of a hobby um in the last uh 10 15 years i i've, I've started to play more music and and to just uh, to kind of immerse myself in it a bit more um so that's that's really why I've started to play more music a bit more in the last uh, number of years. That's, um, that's brilliant. Um, and that's actually a very good story, I think. You've remembered some really incredible details there. Um, so now I have three uh, quick fire questions. Um, oh, no. <laughs> no, they're, they're not too hard, don't worry. My brain. Um, <laughs> your favourite venues to play at. Do you have any favourite venues where you like to play at? Um, I love the Gaiety Theatre. I think the Gaiety Theatre is a beautiful theatre to play. Um, it's it's a lovely venue to uh to watch a play in. Um, 
and it's a beautiful space uh, to play from the stage. Um, it's just, it's it's really, um, uh, really well, uh, you know, constructed because if you're on the stage and you're, um, you're playing to an audience, uh, it doesn't feel like, uh, when, when the place is full, it's the atmosphere is electric. Um, the place holds about a thousand people. Um, but when it's full, uh, it doesn't feel like there's a thousand people there because you almost feel like you can reach from the stage and, 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 and touch, you know, the people who are, uh, out there, but, um, it, it's, it's really a beautiful space to play. Um, but I think Vicar street is a beautiful venue. I've never played it. I, I've been on the stage. I've been a guest uh, as part of one or two events that have taken place there. Um, and um, uh, but but uh, so I, I you know I, I've never spent a full night on on Vicar Street, but I love I love to go and see um, bands there, and I think it's a, a really wonderful venue. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. Um, next then, um. Have you any music that you listen to at the moment that you'd like to highlight that you think is very good? Um, yeah, let me think now. I, at the moment, I'm I'm well. I'm I'm sort of listening to a podcast at the moment, which uh, a friend of mine put me onto, and there's tons of music on that, and it's quite nostalgic. It's um, it's called uh, let me see if I can remember it because it's a big title. It's called Gilbert Gottfried's. Uh, amazing colossal podcast and it's um this uh, comedian called Gilbert Godfrey and his um partner who's our uh, his friend uh, co-host on the show uh I think his name is Frank um Santo Padre is his name and they I interview uh lots of people from the world of uh, of movies and um you know broadway um they interview older actors and producers and writers and it's just got all these wonderful stories um from uh you know going back years going back to uh, variety and vaudeville uh the variety and vaudeville days um so it's really entertaining um with regard to music i suppose i i i'm 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 always wondering you know where i'm going to get my you know my my influences from but um you know i'm not a huge fan of 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 platforms like spotify but i do use spotify uh because um it it, it opens me up to other uh, music so if i if i like a song and i i put the song on and then i go to the radio option for that song it it uh, it introduces me to 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 music that I ordinarily or otherwise wouldn't wouldn't hear. Um, as regard to any particular um, uh, artists, I'm I'm a devil for just listening back to old older music all the time. Um, you know, and 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 like I said, uh, I'm a uh, I'm a sucker for blues music. That's. Again, perfect answer. So I'll actually look into a couple of those things. And then now my final question for you today, Phelan, is uh, you've got a couple of gigs coming up. If people wanted to find you, could you tell them when and where you're going to be doing these different gigs? Yeah, well, um, I'm playing with a friend of mine, Ant O'Drennan. Uh, next Thursday in the Stag's Head, uh, we're 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 starting off um, a little um, blues night there. Uh, next Sunday, it's the fourteenth of September. Uh, downstairs in the Stag's Head, it's free in, and um, Anto's an amazing player. He's played with people like the Cores and with uh, Mike and the Mechanics. Um, with um, um, uh, his name escapes me now. Um, driving home for Christmas. Um, uh, oh. uh, what's his name? Um, but you know, he Anto's a great player, and um, uh, he he I I've toured a show about my dad, um, uh, called Remembering Ronnie, and Anto has played on that show with me, uh, where we tell stories and and play some songs, uh, from the Dubliners back catalogue, 
songs that my dad would have sung, but also songs like some blues songs that, you know, my dad would have liked, you know, uh, by uh, Bessie Smith and um, uh, and and, and uh, Rory Gallagher. Oh, Chris Rea, that's who... Chris did Rea, that's right? exactly the man. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, so yeah, myself and Anto have done quite a bit together at this stage. Um, so I'm really excited about this. Uh, hopefully we'll be playing there uh, every Thursday. Um, and then I'm playing out in Greystones in Dan's bar um, in um, on the 13th of October. And uh, and then hopefully in the new year, I'm going to take that show about my dad out again and uh, we'll take it on tour. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. You've got a lot coming up. Well, thank you, Phelan. So make sure to check out um, Phelan on everything he's an amazing amazing musician and also a great actor as well <laughs> so if you have haven't watched my left foot obviously if you're a kid you might not be able to watch it but if you haven't watched my left foot and if you are an adult please go check it out see if you can spot Phelan <laughs> thank you so much not at all my great time Phelan great bye brilliant for having me bye bye Thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Logan Sounds Off. And if you have any questions or requests, you can email Logan Sounds Off at gmail.com.